Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be doing another round of beauty favorites. This is technically my July favorites, but I feel like I'm posting this a little bit late to the party. So let's just call this my general favorites as of late. <laughs> I also have quite a nice variety to share with you guys today. Of course, we've got makeup, skincare, a little bit of hair. I even have a beauty treatment that I did very recently that um, not to be dramatic, but I feel like it's kind of changed my life. Just just a smidge. I hope you guys are gonna enjoy it. Let me know all of your thoughts below and let's get right into it. I'm gonna zoom you guys in because I need to show you something. Wait, a little bit closer. Much better. Let's just take a look at my lashes right now, okay? So two days ago, my lashes did not look like this. So yes, this is technically my July favorites, but I got this lash lift done like two days ago. Honestly, just needed to talk to you guys about this ASAP. So I believe I spoke about a previous lash lift that I did in my beauty procedures video and I mentioned that it was a pretty bad experience. Um, just overall, it was very uncomfortable. It also gave me pretty much zero in the result department. Like my lashes looked the same. Like it looked like I lightly curled them with a lash curler, but really nothing crazy. So I waited for that lash lift to completely wear off on my eyes. And then I decided to try a lash lift out again at Beauty's Lab here in Montreal. So my lashes right now are the result of that lash lift. I am currently wearing no mascara. I did not curl my lashes. I woke up like this. I'm just really, really excited that I decided to try a lash lift again because I feel like it was well worth it the second time around. And anything that makes you feel even more confident when you're wearing zero makeup is an A++ in my books. And I feel like this is really just upping my no makeup makeup game. And I love that. So all that to say, big fan of the lash lift. I think it is really important to go to the right person, go to the right place. Obviously, as you can see, it makes all the difference. Okay, let's zoom out a little bit now because <laughs> you're really close to my face. Let's talk a little bit about some skincare products. My last favorites video, which was my May favorites, I spoke a little bit about the Stradia Liquid Gold Lightweight Skin Strengthening Moisturizer. I mentioned that I completely changed my skincare routine. I started incorporating some new products and I would let you know how I got on with the products after you know a little bit more time using them. And as you can see, I am almost completely done. I'm like a few pumps away from completely finishing this bottle. And this, I can confidently say, is probably my favorite moisturizer I have ever tried. This moisturizer is really just everything that I could want in a moisturizer. And I can really see myself using this all year round and loving it all year round. What makes this so great is I find that it's super lightweight, but so deeply nourishing. I've been using this for about two months and I haven't noticed that it's clogged my pores or made me break out in any way. And I've actually found that my dry patches have decreased significantly since I started using this, especially in combination with some other serums. But I really feel like this is the star of the show. And I also love how affordable this is. Like it's not crazy expensive, which is amazing, and I need to get a restock ASAP. It's also lightweight enough for my morning routine and nourishing enough for my nighttime routine, so I just use this. The ingredients are obviously also very hydrating, and they all just react so nicely to my skin. It is truly liquid gold. Another skincare product that I've been loving is from First Aid Beauty. This is the Brighten and Glow Eye Cream with Niacinamide. This is kind of like a tinted eye cream, which is really nice for no makeup makeup days. I really love the First Aid Beauty eye creams in general. Um, I've never find that I've had any issues with them. They don't like make my under eyes break out or anything. They're also just really nice and simple and hydrating. This one is great because it has the lightest, lightest hint of peach to it. It doesn't add any coverage, obviously, but it does add the lightest hint of brightness and also a really nice glow for underneath the eye. So it just makes the under eyes look really nice and fresh. And I've really found myself gravitating towards this when I'm not really wearing any makeup because I know that it will just make my under eyes look really awake even without any concealer. Some other skincare products I've been loving are these two guys. They're both cleansers. This is the Skin Fix Barrier Plus Foaming Oil Cleanser. This is actually an old favorite of mine. I used to use this all the time. I would go through bottle after bottle after bottle. Kind of gave it a little bit of a break until recently when I was at Sephora. I saw it on the shelf and I picked it up because I needed a new cleanser. And as soon as I started using it again, I questioned why I ever stopped because it's such a great gentle cleanser. So I've been trying to gravitate towards more like hydrating cleansers that are cream or oil based because it just works better for my skin. I actually use this to break down my makeup and then I'll go in a second time just to get rid of anything that's still left over on my face and my skin always feels really nice and clean but never ever ever stripped. Then this is the Fenty Skin Milk Off Jelly Oil Makeup Melting Cleanser. This I've also been really loving to specifically remove my makeup. So first of all the packaging for this is really interesting especially for this type of product. 
product. I'm not gonna do it right now because I don't wanna waste any product, but you press on this little silicone thing at the top and it dispenses the product through here. And it's a very like thick, oily, jelly texture. And it does exactly what it's meant to do. It does an amazing job of breaking down makeup, but it doesn't leave an oily residue on the face. And it just feels so luxurious to use. I just love the texture of this so much because it really is like a jelly texture. It's kind of between a solid, balm and an oil so it just feels great on the skin and like i said it really just gets the job done so i do have one body care product that i wanted to mention this is from Caudalie and it's brand new it's called the smooth and glow oil elixir i love body oil so much i feel like i've really gotten into body oils quite heavily over the summertime. I love body oils to use on their own, but I also love mixing them into my moisturizers to almost like boost the hydration and make them extra nourishing. And when you put a body oil on your entire body, it feels so luxurious. Like it feels like the ultimate form of self-care. I love that it's in a spray, so it's super easy to kind of just spray all over and then rub in. Almost kind of feels more like a dry oil so after you apply it to the skin it does absorb pretty quickly so it leaves that nice like moisturized feel to the skin but it doesn't make your skin feel slippery so after applying this i don't even have to wait too long until i'm able to like go into bed which is really nice and then another huge reason why i love this is the scent it smells like pear but the most natural smelling pear i've ever smelt in a product and i'm not usually into like these more fresh scents i typically like things that are a little bit sweeter but this just smells so spa-like and it almost smells really soothing as well. But now let's jump into some makeup products that I've been loving. Let's talk the Hourglass Veil Hydrating Skin Tint. So I ended up picking up the shade seven, which matches me very, very well. And this is kind of like more of a medium coverage skin tint. So it's not a skin tint that's going to be super sheer. It does have some like solid coverage to it, but it's still very lightweight like you would expect in a skin tint. So I actually really like to apply this with my fingers. I just apply about that much and I kind of just like dot it all over my face and blend it in. I feel like I haven't really played much with Hourglass products lately so I was really excited to try out the skin tint um, to get back into the brand a little bit. This product just looks so skin-like and not makeup-y at all. When I apply with my fingers it covers up my redness just enough if i go in with like a sponge or even a brush i do feel like i'm able to build it up a little bit but i've just been really liking applying it with my fingers because it really just gives that very like natural skin like coverage adds such a nice like hydrated moisturized look to the skin too it's just so easy to wear i've been slapping this on my face with my fingers every single day and have just been loving the way it wears also throughout the entire day the only thing i will say is that it's tiny you have 1.1 fluid ounces which isn't really that unusual for a foundation but it's expensive either way i know i'm going to be getting a lot of use out of this um, especially moving into fall. Can't even believe that I'm saying we're moving into fall, but we are. And it's gonna be getting a little bit colder outside. And when it does, I feel like this is gonna be a product that I'm gonna wear a ton. For concealer, I've been loving the Makeup Forever HD Skin, and this one is in the shade 1.3N. By the way, I just wanna say, I'm very proud of myself that I'm talking about products that I don't think I've spoken about yet on my channel which is pretty exciting because normally I talk about the same products all the time. This is another very easy to wear base product the texture is super thin so you can see as i'm blending it it just blends almost immediately it's not a thick concealer that requires like work to like actually work into the skin it blends pretty quickly and because it's so thin i actually don't necessarily feel like you need to set this with powder and it doesn't really crease or move too much if really at all and that is actually what it says on the little bottle it says that it's anti-crease and i didn't even realize that it was supposed to be anti-crease until i experienced it myself and i was like oh that's actually a claim that it has. I actually feel like if you have mature skin, you would probably love this. I think my mom would really, really enjoy this. I'm gonna tell her to, to pick it up. I actually might even have an extra one to give to her. Mom, remind me to give that to you. Let's talk blush. This has been my favorite, 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 favorite blush combo lately. So starting off first with a cream blush. This is actually from Summer Fridays and it's called the Blush Bomb Stick in the shade Warm Desert. Now, I didn't even know that Summer Fridays came out with these cream blushes and I picked up this color because it just looked like a really interesting blush shade and it's kind of like a dirty peach. It is very, very sheer, but buildable. So I'm actually pretty generous with it because let me show you what it's like when I just put on like three dots. You can almost barely see it. So I really pile it on on my cheeks like that but it's such a balmy texture that it blends out so easily and you can easily blend it with just your fingers and i just find it to be like a really 
simple and easy formula to work with. Like lately when, when it's come to my makeup, I have just been really into like the no frills makeup routine. I don't want my makeup to be complicated. I want it to be easy. I want to be able to like throw it on and go. And that's why I've been loving all these products because I feel like they do exactly that. So I've been wearing this on its own, but more often than not, I have been layering a little bit of this blush on top. This is the Dior Rosy Glow in the shade Cherry. Uh, Dior recently launched a couple new shades from their Rosy Glow line, and I honestly love all of them. Rosewood is also a stunning color. Cherry is it. It's obviously a super bright cherry red color. It's surprisingly pretty wearable because they don't apply super full on um you can actually go in pretty hard with your brush and not worry that you're going to over apply it which is nice it just adds like the perfect amount of pop to the cheek and i've been layering this on top of so many different cream blushes but this has really been my favorite combination because i feel like these two colors complement each other perfectly and i've been applying this really focused like on the apple of my cheek almost like directly underneath my eyes to give me that very like youthful blushy look and I love putting it across my nose as well. I have a new brow favorite and I'm excited because I've really been stuck in my brow routine. I've, I've been using like the same products over and over and over again. So it's nice to find something that I kind of feel like beats some of the other clear brow gels that I've been loving lately. This is the Milk Kush Brow Lamination and this is like the perfect clear brow gel. It has amazing hold, but it doesn't make your brows like sticky or crunchy or flaky. I saw somebody on TikTok um, use their clear brow gel backwards so they brush their brow hairs forward and then they brush them back it really just works the gel in the brow hairs so you get very good hold and then i just brush them up and then shape the top and that's how i've been doing my brows every single day so i brush everything forward look crazy and brush it all up and then shape it for lip, I have some old and some newer products that I've been pairing together. So it's a combination of the Makeup Forever Lip Liner in the shade Wherever Walnut with the Huda Beauty Lip Blush in the shade Coral Kiss, which I've mentioned before. And then I layer a little bit of the MAC Squirt Plumping Gloss Stick in the shade Simulation. I love the Makeup Forever Artist Pencils. I've used them for years and Wherever Walnut is probably my new favorite because it's like two shades darker than my natural lip color so i just find it always looks so natural on my lips it just makes my lips look plump and i've actually really been enjoying a very like blurred lip line so i kind of smudge it a bit make it look a little bit messy then i go in with the lip blush the color is kind of like a burnt coral and this is essentially a lip stain, so it does last pretty well. So I've been wearing this combination a ton, and then one day I decided to layer a little bit of simulation on top. So these are gloss sticks. If you're familiar with this type of formula, they can be, they're not tricky to use. You just need to be a little bit more mindful with how you use them. I would definitely recommend just kind of being gentle with the product, because if you press too hard, it's going to kind of go everywhere. You also want to be sure that you're not um, twisting it up too much too, because if you twist it up too much, it's too soft, and it's going to kind of just go everywhere. So you can either dab it on, which is what I like to do, and it gives a stunning amount of shine. The glossiness of this is what makes your lips look so plump and so big, but it's also the formula and the way that it kind of sits on top of the lip and doesn't sink into it um, to give you that almost like glass-like mirror-like shine. By the way, I'm actually not gonna apply any mascara because my lash lift is just doing the most on its own and I don't feel like I need it. So no mascara today. My absolute favorite setting spray of the summer is without a doubt the Cali Ray Surf Proof Setting Spray. I've pretty much been spraying this on my face every single day and I find that it does an incredible job of locking in my makeup and also adding a little bit of hydration as well. I feel like this is such an underrated product. The mist is also so fine. So that is it for my makeup favorites. Now let's talk perfume. So I get into like these phases where I get completely obsessed with a perfume and it's pretty much all that I wear um, until I switch things up again and then I get obsessed with another perfume. So right now I am totally in a Malone and Getz dark rum phase. This is not a new perfume in my life. Um, it's kind of been in my rotation for a while now, but this is one of my favorite warm scents to wear in the summertime. I definitely do prefer warmer scents. I love anything with a little bit of smokiness, with some vanilla. I love leathery scents, but in the summertime, it can sometimes feel a little bit too heavy. Dark rum, I feel like is a perfect compromise. So you have a lot of like sweet and also musky and like stronger notes in here. There's bergamot, leather, creamy milk, but then of course there's rum and also a little bit of cherry. So that bit of fruitiness really does brighten up the scent and kind of 
lifts it up so that it's not too heavy and too warm and too spicy. I also have a hair favorite. This is the JVN Complete Conditioning Mist, and I've been using this more so when my hair is curly to refresh my curls. So this is a conditioning mist that you're able to put on wet hair, but also dry hair. So before like the last couple of weeks, I've only used this product on wet hair, and I didn't realize that it was also developed to be able to use on dry hair too without completely weighing it down. But it's meant to kind of just add a little bit more hydration to your hair. And I don't necessarily need that when my hair is straight, but I definitely do need it when it's curly, especially on my day two or day three curls. My curls are looking a little bit frizzy, maybe even a little bit dry. I spray this on my hair and it just kind of like revives my curls. This actually saved me from me wanting to wash my hair again and redo my curls. And that's actually a big reason as to why I don't really wear my hair curly as often as I would like. And that's because I basically have to wash my hair like five times as much as when I just blow dry my hair. I can go like four or five days between wash days when my hair is blow dried, but when my hair is curly, I can go one, maybe two max until I feel like I need to like rewash my hair so my curls actually look good. So this has been helping me kind of push off my wash days a little bit when I do wear my hair curly. But my last beauty favorite that I wanted to share with you guys is actually a hair accessory. This is a claw clip that I have not been able to stop wearing. It's from a brand called Chunks and I just absolutely love the color of this clip. I love the lime green. I love the shape of it. I love the size of it. I just have been wearing this in my hair like every single day. Um, I have a lot of claw clips in my collection, but this is the one that I've been reaching for the most. And I just love the combination of the green with my red hair. I think it looks so fun and it's also just great quality. And that is it guys. Those are all of my beauty favorites over the last little bit. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know all of your thoughts down below on everything that I spoke about today. And if you want to share some of your favorites, definitely do in the comments. Hit the thumbs up button if you did enjoy and subscribe if you want to see more videos from me and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.